A shocking new discovery has sparked curiosity worldwide and Pope Francis has finally revealed the truth about the Shroud of Turin. But why is all this new evidence only coming up now? What was being hidden about the Shroud of Turin for all these years and what exactly does it mean for the church? You might want to stick around till the very end of this video where I reveal a shocking truth that Pope Francis has just revealed about the Shroud of Turin. Religious relics are actually quirky artifacts claiming to be genuine pieces of history. We have a variety to choose from, like splinters from Jesus' cross, fragments of Muhammad's beard, or even the Buddha's tooth. But verifying the authenticity? Well, that's a whole different ballgame. These relics have cleverly managed to remain largely outside the realm of scientific scrutiny. However, there's one exception that stands out like a peacock in a flock of pigeons, the Shroud of Turin. Now let's talk about the shroud, shall we? And you may want to pay close attention because these details will be very important in just a minute. Think of the shroud as a rectangular sheet, approximately 14 feet long and 3.5 feet wide, supposedly the very cloth that enshrouded Jesus' body in the tomb. What sets it apart is the striking image imprinted on it, a naked man with hands covering the groin, caused by a peculiar yellowish discoloration. And if that's not enough, there are what appear to be bloodstains too, Quite the mysterious piece, isn't it? But guess what? The evidence supporting the Shroud's authenticity isn't as clear-cut as the image itself. Oh no, it's been a wild ride of scientific investigation spanning decades. Here's where things start to get interesting. Back in the 1970s, we witnessed a flurry of enthusiastic researchers from various backgrounds scrutinizing the Shroud and its curious image. Their findings ignited vigorous academic debates, paving the way for years of subsequent studies. Today, the bulk of the evidence seems to suggest that the Shroud emerged sometime during the Middle Ages, lovingly crafted by human hands. Yet, despite this consensus, the elusive question of how that image was made still leaves investigators scratching their heads. This gap in knowledge provides fertile ground for a plethora of fringe theories and wild speculations, making the Shroud a mystery that needs answers. Now let's rewind the clock a bit to truly understand Pope Francis' shocking announcement that we will reveal at the end of this video. The Shroud made its grand entrance onto the historical stage in the 14th century and boy did it cause quite a stir. Its first recorded appearance is documented in a letter from the French bishop to the Pope denouncing it as forgery. But did that dampen the Shroud's spirit? Not a chance. It continued to captivate hearts and minds as it journeyed from France, eventually finding its resting place in Turin, Italy, where it has resided for over four centuries. One of the early pioneers in Shroud studies was a French anatomist named Yves Delage, who embarked on his investigations at the beginning of the 20th century. His observations, along with more recent work, have largely supported the hypothesis that the image corresponds to a man who suffered significant injuries before his demise. Proponents of the Shroud's authenticity often point out that it bears resemblance to a crucified individual given the wounds and bloodstains. But wait, the scientific examination of this mysterious artifact didn't truly kick into high gear until the 1970s. Now this is where it starts to get really shocking. Enter the Shroud of Turin Research Project, a diverse group of researchers that included chemists, physicists and even government institution experts, though they curiously lacked archaeologists. Determined to crack the case, they employed a range of modern techniques, from X-ray and ultraviolet imaging to chemical tests and optical processing using NASA-grade equipment. Talk about a squad of dedicated investigators! In 1981, the team published the conclusions, and boy did they raise eyebrows! Their findings seem to suggest that the Shroud's origins transcended the grasp of scientific understanding. They boldly declared, there are no chemical or physical methods known which can account for the totality of the image. They also ruled out the use of pigments and confidently claimed to have discovered real blood on the cloth. Furthermore, they surmised that the image was created by direct contact with a three-dimensional object like a human body. Later, research supported these claims, unearthing more evidence of real blood and even pinpointing pollen on the shroud that originated from the Middle East. However, not everyone was convinced. Enter Walter Macrone, a chemist and microscopy expert who conducted an independent analysis borrowed from the shroud in 1978. His findings pointed towards the presence of pigments, suggesting that someone had at least partially drawn the image. Macron boldly concluded that the shroud was a remarkable creation of a talented artist from the Middle Ages. 
Additionally, a modern-day team managed to reproduce the image using techniques available to artists during the Middle Ages, dealing yet another blow to the theory that the shroud couldn't have been painted. Now, here's the deal, when it comes to the shroud's authenticity, things aren't looking great. Some smarty pants archaeologists decided to use carbon dating, their go-to technique to give it a try, and guess what? The results were quite damning. They found out that this supposed relic was created between 1260 and 1390 AD, which is way after Jesus supposedly kicked the bucket. Talk about bad timing. But hey, let's not lose hope just yet. Some folks try to challenge these dating results, but it seems their efforts fell flat. And those bloodstains? Oh boy, they're not fooling anyone. Real dried blood should be a dark brown, not vibrant red that we see on the shroud. Now let's dive into the physics of this whole thing. Apparently the story goes that the image on the shroud magically appeared when Jesus vanished into thin air. Sounds like a fantastic magic trick, right? Well, here is where things get really curious. According to one physicist, this trick involved a burst of light, heat and even neutrons. Talk about bending the laws of physics! But wait, hold your horses, there's a catch. Another brainiac, Robert Hedges, pointed out that humans can't just poof away in a neutron-filled spectacle. Bummer. So here's the bottom line. If we're gonna propose supernatural explanations, why bother with scientific measurements at all? It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It just doesn't make sense, my friend. But here's the fun part. The scientific research on the shroud plays a hilarious game of tug of war between religion and science. Some folks believe that religion needs no experiments to prove its worth, while others are on the hunt for hard evidence. And guess where the shroud enthusiasts fall? Right in the evidence-hungry camp, of course. So does the Holy Church have an official stance on the legitimacy of the Shroud of Turin? You may want to pay close attention now because things are about to come full circle and the final revelation will definitely surprise you. Pope Francis and the Catholic Church have taken a rather chill approach. They're like, hey faithful folks, you do you. Feel free to make up your own mind about this Shroud thing. They even allow people to venerate it, examine its intricate details and catch a glimpse when it's put on display. The shroud isn't a mandatory part of our faith, it's like an optional side dish to the main course of Catholic beliefs. Our faith in the resurrection does not rely on this shroud, it's all about trusting the apostles as testimony. That's the real deal. The Shroud of Turin has become the ultimate mystery in the world of relics, with its authenticity fiercely debated, but hey guess what? Some cool new tests have come along that are way more accurate and won't be fooled by carbon-14 contamination. Talk about progress! One of these fancy tests, called wide-angle x-ray scattering, even dated the shroud back to the first century. Boom! Take that, doubters! And it gets better. Three other dating tests by Professor Gilio Fanti and his buddies at the University of Padua confirmed that ancient date. So why on earth would the church bother with more carbon dating? Some researchers are saying, enough already, the evidence is rock solid. So let's put this case before a jury. They have no choice but to rule in favor of the shroud's authenticity and the resurrection. Case closed.